everyone and welcome to Talk Together. Thank you for joining us for an evening of talking about Dungeons and Dragons. I am Rebecca Hare. I will be your host tonight and I am chatting to Ali, who you can say here. So first things first, Ali, who are you? What do you do? Why are you here? <laughs> well, in terms of d and I will be an artificer of the um, computer science college or Speciality. So, whatever um, I do research for a university, so I'm a researcher at Cranfield University and we deliver uh, research to companies. That's really cool. So, that's what you're doing when you aren't playing DD, the sad parts of our lives. <laughs> but now. How- yeah, how long have you played D and D for? How did you hear about Roll Together? I'm just being nosy. Tell me everything, please. <laughs> yeah, so I think I've been playing D and D for about three years, but I've been playing TTP R TTT TT RPGs for longer. And for one of my home games, you might know um, me. Uh, sorry, Red, Liz, and John. So. I started actually uh, watching Roll Together with Sea Swords Forsaken. If oh, that's I'm brilliant. Saying it well. Um, so, yeah. And then when um, some of the shows were, or like when I finished the shows that were like live, I went back and I've been watching as well some of the um, older videos, let's say. Amazing. Awesome. So I should probably get through the rest of our intro and then I can officially start asking you the questions. I jumped the gun a bit there, didn't I? I'm just very excited that we get to talk. Okay. So uh, the intro, where did we get to? This is Ali. I'm Rebecca. Tonight, we'll be going through some questions and anecdotes and probably a lot of tangents. And the questions, as always, will be decided by the dice. I have so many more D20s. I got given so many D20s for Christmas. So tonight, I'll be rolling uh, this one. And this dice will decide the questions we ask. Before we kick off, the stream will run for an hour. Uh, We're delighted to be sponsored by Hero Forge, Ultra Pro and Elderwood Academy and supported by D&D Beyond, Warriors of Waterdeep and Level Up Dice. We are Roll Together RPG on all social media um, and our shows are available as podcasts. Just search Roll Together RPG on your favourite podcasting app. And finally, and very importantly, a huge thank you to our D20 Club on Patreon. Um, They are brilliant. Go check them out. Right. Ali, are you ready for your first question? Roll that dice. Oh, thank goodness. You're doing it for me, so I don't have to. It's so cringe. Oh, that is an 18. So, oh, it's a great question to start with. Who or what is the best villain you've ever faced in a game? <laughs> so, um, I have some options here, but I think uh, one is a little bit of meta gaming. So, my worst villain is time scheduling. <laughs> time scheduling always, you know, ruins every single game. And then my favorite one, which is in game, consequences. Consequences <laughs> are like the best villain ever. You know, like you never expect that some things will like domino to 10 or 20 sessions after. And it's like, why did I do that? And if we are talking about like a specific NPC or character, um, so in one of my home games, there is this, um, basically it's like an open um, game, or like open, like sand war thing, you know, you can just explore things. And then at some point we just found this sort of dragon that we didn't know it was a dragon, so it was a person. And then this NPC, stay with us for a while and he was just like oh yes you can do it and I can give information and sort of being as sometimes a pain in the ass but then when we find out that he was like the villain after back everything it was like wait a minute <laughs> are you saying that this time you were just conducting us for you to keep going with your plan and it was just like amazing I mean you know sometimes you develop 
feelings for NPCs. So it's like, oh, I don't want this to die or like pets or things like that. So this was this kind of character. And it was like, oh my God, I should have let you die like three sessions after we found you. But <laughs> What did you do with them in the end? We had to kill it. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it was a big bad guy from the campaign. So Sorry. Was it a good, a good battle? It was a long battle. You know, like one of those things is like, really just three rounds of three hours and just like, we haven't gone through even half of the hit points of these creatures. So it's like, okay, let's have a break. We continue next time. So I think this sort of pace that we got to through the whole battle, it was amazing for to have some sort of meta gaming between sessions. So it was like, oh, maybe we can do this. Maybe we can do that. And then try to make some synergy with um, the whole um, players. And then when you come to the actual battle, everything goes south. And then it's like, yeah. I don't know, the best moments when plans go south. I don't know. Yeah. I have to ask the consequences is the best, the best answer I've ever heard to this question. <laughs> you sound like you have a specific consequence in mind. <laughs> what's what's the like the best or worst, I don't know, consequence that's come back to fight you in a game? Well, I think so I have this character in one of my home games, and I think I can talk about from the perspective of other players who is a cleric. Mm -hmm. And that cleric has always prepared a vanishment in case my character does something stupid or, it, or, <laughs> or puts himself in a crazy situation so the cleric can just banish me to safe place. Nice. Like another dimension. So that character has had a lot of key moments when it's like, he's not going to do it. Or hit it. <laughs> just, just develop into other stuff. It's like I, I was never wanted to this to happen, but it did. So I remember this time that uh, I thought I was going to open a puzzle, like a box thing, and it wasn't a puzzle. It was like the coffin of a mummy, and I was like, <laughs> well, yes. So um, uh, a battle after, or like a, a, an encounter after. So my character got um, cursed. So he got this, uh, I don't remember the ability of the mummy, but the you know, mummies can sort of, you start rotting mm -hmm. yourself. So it's like, yeah, I think it was one of my- Mummy characters. rot is just, I think the worst condition I've come across in game. I know it's not mechanically the worst, but it's awful and I hate it. Yes, and then sort of, uh, you, Hopefully, I'm not answering one of the other questions, but I sort of only play bards, or I tend to play bards. So doing that to a bard who is like charismatic and, you know, sort of the face of the party. So that means that the face of the party now is <laughs> ugly and all with wrinkles. And it's like, no, why? And then you have like, a, I think you need to remove course or like a high level spell mm. that we couldn't get till later. So it was like, uh, why, why did I touch that thing to begin with. Amazing. Do you think there are any consequences waiting for Tesele? <laughs> I think I'm expecting some. You know, like Tesele, I don't know, there is a lot of uh, the backstory that I hope we could share with the audience. Uh, but yeah, consequences, consequences, consequences. Wait, for those who haven't seen it yet, Tesele is Ali's Bard in uh, a Shadows of Fell Symphony that uh, had episode one on Monday. It is magnificent fun. I can say all the cast are wonderful, um, but oh. Sally is magnificent. And I feel like, yeah, there are some consequences waiting around the corner <laughs> that you've just sort of set up for yourself very nicely. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. I cannot wait to learn more about his backstory because... <laughs> There's so much going on there. However, we can't do spoilers because, mm -mm. I mean, I don't know them yet and I want to find them out in game and then the audience will find them out in game as well. So much as I want to ask you to tell me everything, I won't. Shall we do another question instead? Please. Amazing. Oh, okay. Nice. Oh, this one is a question four. Mm -hmm. Who would you love to have at your gaming table? 
Uh, so I think I've heard like excellent answers about like people that is on the theoretical kind of background or like, oh, I want to have this person who is really charismatic or really, I don't know, like um, how to say, um, VIP person. But my answer is I want the mean girls to be on my table. I mean, very pleased, very, very pleased. So I think I, I haven't given a thought. Of, I've given a thought about um, who will play in what, mm. but I think they will play. But I think talking about the characters, I think I will ask them, ask them to uh, play someone different to their personalities. Mm. So probably uh, Regina will have to play a cleric. <laughs> a mean, a horrible cleric. The, the meanest of the meanest to play a cleric. Does that mean Karen has to play a wizard? Very intelligent, yes. Mm. Oh, that or if we go to a funny place, you know, uh, she can predict weather. So maybe she can have a, she can be maybe just one level of druid. Mm. So she can druid craft. That little <laughs> uh, weather the prediction of, of the weather, yes. But. That would be amazing. Oh, who would DM though? Um, I think I will go with the actual um, actress. So the the professor, the one with the glasses. I don't remember. Nina Fey. So I think she is really talented comedian. She's amazing. So probably I will I will ask her to DM. And she's a writer as well, isn't she? She could write the best campaign with the best jokes, and that's a fantastic. <laughs> Would you be in this campaign or just like laughing from I, sidelines? I would like to be watching it. Mm -hmm. We'll probably have some like featuring from time to time. Yeah. So, yes. I think I'd be too scared to sit down at an actual table with Regina George. That sounds like <laughs> I mean, the thing is, you know, like out of game, she would be like a bitch. But in game, <laughs> I would, you have to be a cleric. You know, the stereotypical cleric. Mm. Because, you know, you can have some really edgy clerics. Yes, I have met them. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be the one taking care of everyone. That would be great. That is fantastic. How did you think of that? Were you watching Mean <laughs> Girls and like D&D &D campaign? So I've told you, like, I've watched the other um, interviews and it's like, oh, that's very interesting. But, you know, that's sometimes you... We think of a person of of an, an actor or actress for what they present, mm. and probably they are not like that in real life. You know, like probably some of the actor or actresses may be introverted, so maybe it will be some sort of difficult have some difficult difficulties to to go to D and D or role play. Mm. But then characters, we know how they are fully for what they present in on there. So. There, would, there wouldn't be like a, any surprise um, thing that they may bring to the table because now we know that Regina is a bitch, that uh, the others are a little bit odd and so on. So mm. that's it. Just just wanted to go for something more uh, secure, let's say, or like something that, not secure, but what is the word? Like something that is well known. Or yeah. That uh, mainstream, let's say, you know, like, there is no possibility that uh, Regina George will, at some point, bring her vulnerability to the table. No, no, Regina George is a bit. Mm. It's a brilliant question. Maybe we should add it to our list of what real people would you play, but also what set of characters do you want to play D&D &D with? I think I want to play it with everyone from Winnie the Pooh. Can you imagine? Igor and Tigger, oh my goodness. Yes, yes, very pleased. It was uh, brilliant. The kangaroo is really apprehensive. Right? No, no, who is apprehensive? The, the, uh, is the bunny? Oh, rabbit. Rabbit gets very stressed by everything, yeah. Imagine him or he, they uh, play a uh, cleric. <laughs> right, so please. And then Rue would be bouncing around all over the table getting incredibly excited. Yeah, that doesn't sound like anyone I play. That sounds great. <laughs> yes. Oh, it'd be brilliant. You have to make Eeyore play like a really upbeat kind of 
paladin. Uh, yeah. Or a really chirpy warlock, something like that. Something high in charisma for Eeyore, I think would be great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really slow paced talking, but always uh, coherent. Yes. Maybe a bard eloquent. <gasps> eloquent. That's it. Bard. Eeyore is a bard. We've got it. Let's play it. Let's trademark it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and now I think for today or last week. Yes. Yes. So is we don't have to pay rights. We have to stay clear of Disney Winnie the Pooh because that's still trademarked, but A.A. Mill Winnie the Pooh is up for grabs. So maybe we should talk to the producers and get a Winnie the Pooh one shot. <laughs> Chad, <laughs> let us know if you want to to, to see a, maybe one shot of Winnie the Pooh. Brilliant. And just say yes anyway, because I want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> Onwards. Okay. Dooby doo, do dooby doo. Oh, that is an eight. What is an eight? An eight? Oh, it's one of our most controversial questions. Ali, how do you feel about PvP? Yes, please, all the time. No. That's another one. Yes, good. <laughs> no, the thing is, I I think we talk, we talk about a lot of uh, uh, secure tables, right? So mm. before starting a campaign, you need to um, make sure that everybody's on the same page about that. I always say, very pleased if without the odd excuse of that's why my character would do without that if you feel like the right answer for that is punching me in the face go for it right but on the other hand or like not on the other hand but on a non-conventional uh, campaign mm. sort of talk i love when people run uh, pvp tournaments so it's just like Ooh. amazing. So it's like player against player in a sort of arena or whatever they set up. However, uh, D&D is not well balanced for PvP, mm. you know? So you can find some really crazy combos between classes or yeah. even like, um, multi-class that they are just overpowered. That's why maybe PvP in an actual campaign might not work. Yeah. Or, so you need to be really clear about how to, as a DM, you need to be really clear about what is going to happen in this PvP, mm-hmm. when to stop PvP, because you know nobody wants to kill other characters. You know, they, yeah. maybe they just want to establish a chain of power, or maybe they just want the item or etc etc everything depends on the context but if i will if someone asks me at the beginning of a campaign if i'm okay with pvp go for it yeah good to know (laughs) (laughs) so that's quite mechanical combat based pvp how do you feel about more role play mean pvp (laughs) Then again, yes, please, all the time. I think life in general is full of conflict. Mm. Not to have a little bit of conflict in D&D, right? So I know it could be a little bit uh, uncomfortable with people because sometimes you it could be a little bit difficult to um, separate mm. what is happening in-game and what is happening in out-game. So... If someone is not really comfortable with a discussion, like a confrontation more than a, a, a discussion, by all means, just say like, um, I'm not comfortable with this. I would just rather step away from the situation or I'd rather you to discuss that, have your argument, kill each other, and then I will go on with whatever the result. Mm-hmm. So discussions and arguments in d and might be a little bit not that common, because I believe people don't feel, uh, in my in my experience, uh, not feel comfortable at this arguing with somebody that you yeah. actually don't want to argue. So, let's say if <laughs> if harmony and yes, I- <laughs> would go into an argument, surely it, not. It wouldn't be Ali and Rebecca mm-hmm. arguing, right? But I still have to talk to Rebecca, and Rebecca has to talk to me. So. It could be, I think, be it could be a little bit difficult for yeah. uh, some people. So it's always, and if you that you're watching, you feel uncomfortable with something, 
always speak up. Always, always, because we are here to have fun. You make a really good point. I think I always think of mechanical combat PvP as like a step up, worse, more. But actually, in some senses, it's easier because you're very unlikely to stab someone with a sword in your real life unless mm-hmm. you have a strange life. Yeah. You do you. Um, and but, you roll a dice for that. Yeah. And that's obviously pretend you're not also punching the player in the face. But with role play at PvP, it does get a bit blurrier. But like you said, safe tables come first. Make sure everyone's having a great time and then go for it. Yes. Sounds brilliant. You are wise, Ali. (laughs) (laughs) Another before I embarrass you too much. (laughs) Roll that dice. Excellent. Oh, and they we're staying below 10. I don't like it. Uh, this uh, is a three. What is your favorite character class? I feel we've touched on this already. Do I have to answer that question? Tell us everything. Tell us why. <laughs> I love Bart. I, I think, objectively, I think they are top three most powerful classes in d and They are also a little bit like look down because everybody thinks that the bard is just like the horny one that is like talking to a trying to lay with everyone and yes they are but they are more than that so um my fascination with the bards is that i think it's just it comes with the uh jack of all trades mm. i think that i in real life i match with that you know like where you are not the most talented insert known here but you are really good in many things which i think most of us are right like we are good at running but we are not just saying both we are good at swimming but we are not a medalist right so i think thinking of ourselves in a more holistic way Mm -hmm. is better than thing or to me in the life works better than thing like oh, I'm gonna be the best in this because that is so tiring and then I think I want to play every single role as a bard <laughs> so I, I I of course at some point I multi-class or I usually multi-class but you know like no one will in a home game it would be really difficult to think of a um, bard as a frontliner mm. because as Harmony has show and this other character at some point the bard just have to step up and do it right or I haven't I haven't played yet a healer bard mm. but if you think of a healer you go immediately for the cleric or maybe the druid but the bard is like mm, maybe not the best it's not it's really good, but it's not in the power we'll have. So, um, yeah, I think I want to play more and more D&D to play every single role as a bard. That sounds brilliant. That sounds like a really good ambition. Oh, you are wise. Again, I love the idea of Jack of all trades just being what we are, and that's great. I think so. Oh, what, what made you pick um, Artificer to multi-class for Teselli, and how's it going? <laughs> so, Teselli... Um, this version of the celly, so the multiverse exists, and this version of the celly is another version of another celly that I play. And I always try, I mean, when I start to develop a character, I always go for min max. So, how I'm gonna make the most of my abilities in combination with if I'm gonna multiply, how the best combination. And for this one, I wanted to create something that is. Uh, how to say that there is a conflict with ability. So you have charisma for Bard and then intelligence for um, the artificer. So it's like, how can I make this work? Mm-hmm. It was more of a challenge. And the backstory just helped. Or maybe I just forced. <laughs> I don't know. It, it was an interactive work between wanting this... Um, I also play a lot of, well, I don't play Magic that much, or Magic the Gathering, but I try to keep on track with the new um, releases. Mm. And then one of the last releases, they were um, managing, well, 
using this term that is life crafter, which is uh, pe- uh, mages that sort of take uh, nature and technology uh, uh, together or like put, putting them together. And I thought like, hmm, what if a bard would do this? And I thought, bards are creative and emotional. How if we put a little bit of order into this? And then the artificer was there. It was like, so what, what else is also artistry? Well, we have the artificer. So in the, and we, we or I, I thought like art is just dancing and singing. Well, there is more like a painting and a sculpturing. So I think that's where uh, the artificer part of Teseli came from. I like to say, it's Teseli is really creative as a bard, and then the artificer is just the way to put it into useful things, mm-hmm. as we have seen with Swifty. That if you Got have, Swifty. if you don't know who Swifty is, go and watch episode one. And yeah, I think it was more of a challenge. This this combination was more of a challenge. How mm-hmm. to put two classes with different um, abilities together. Yeah, it's been so much fun with an all-bard party for, ob- for all the obvious reasons, but especially for finding all the different multi-classes and how they're working. Playing a bard tank is not something I'd ever thought of before and it's making me so happy. Amazing. But a bard tank on top of an artificer's magic unicorn, it's just the best. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. No spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> My um, first contact with Ali for the people watching was after we'd been put in a campaign and on a Discord server together, was Ali then messaged me going, hi, so I have this idea. Please could you take the mounted combatant feet if that's not really inconvenient? Um, and I think I can, I can, I can help. <laughs> I just went, sure. I'm very bad at min-maxing, so very happy when someone else just goes, take this and you'll be brilliant. So I, had a, I had a sneak peek of what Ali might be planning, but I wasn't expecting a glorious, glorious mechanical unicorn, <laughs> and I love it so much. Yeah. The problem will be at the end of this campaign, if we try and go our separate ways, I don't think Harmony will give you Swifty back. Mm. She has a... I mean, probably we can create a second one. Great. Just, just Perfect. Just time and materials. Otherwise, and <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, shall we have another question before like, oh, I, thre- I threaten uh, the character uh, anymore, apparently? <laughs> okay. Doobie-doo, doobie-doo. Ooh, that is an 11, which is the very broad question. Who is your favourite character? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, um, I don't think I have a favourite. I, I love them all the same. But I think I I was really fond of my very first character. I think in my case, the first D and D character that I ever made. It was I put a lot of myself into it. So it was like, oh, maybe this and this, and then I was like, Ali, you're projecting yourself. Yeah. It's- have fun. It's the uh, rules, I think, that your first D and D character has to just be you in fantasy form. It's the rules. I think so. Yes, they should be a box in, in the uh, books, having that tip. I made a self righteous paladin who has great hair. Like, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, um, I it, it it was a really I invest invested a lot of time. In, in him and um, at the end that the campaign didn't really go long so answering another question that is also the hardest character to say goodbye Ooh, because okay. it's like come on I want to I want to experience myself in medieval fantasy come on and then it was like, well no. but but then I because I was with friends and I think a few of them were like as well like the very first time playing DMV so they did as well this this sort of short way into making the first character, which is I'm gonna do myself, I'm gonna mm-hmm. portray myself. So it was a really cool interaction with what if we would have been born 
in a medieval fantasy and put us together and met somehow. So I think that character and that table was really, really lovely for myself. I'm still remembering. How did you have to say goodbye to them? Did 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 they die? Time scheduling. No, the worst villain of all. But that means they're still out there, they're still alive, and they could come back for another campaign, right? And I should have, like, the character sheet somewhere, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And you know more now, so you can just make them even cooler, if that's possible. <laughs> yes. Were they a bard? Not yet. They weren't a bard! <laughs> what were they? <laughs> the thing is, I think I was trying to go through my live story as well, and I think I put fighter first, like... Okay. I, mean, I, I went to fighter for a while and then I was going into uh, the bar. So it was a little bit weird because I had charisma that I didn't usually use <laughs> in game. And I was like, Ali, what, what, what did you fight that has charisma? I was like, well, tell me. Um, and then once I was about to turn into like uh, the bar, like, Things changes and I'm like, no, please. And yes, I was I was sort of a dex based fighter, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like as powerful as I wanted. Yeah. So I never get into work. What level did you get to? I think it was still level five ish. Okay, so you picked a subclass. What what subclass was Ali the fighter? Uh Battle Master. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Perfect. Brilliant. So, um we had a lot of uh, casters mm. and every time I was like I need to get them out of trouble so um, one of the maneuvers I don't remember the name that allows you to hit a creature and then like create a distraction for another creature to move without um, opportunity attack so mm. it was like I need to save the assets of all these casters that doesn't sound familiar at all <laughs> in an all bad party being the only one with a sword <laughs> <laughs> right right I mean, we all love um, Purple Meat Shield, don't we? True. And I've never actually played a Meat Shield before, so it's very enjoyable having a go. But this Meat Shield has gone to the gym, you know? It's not just muscles, not meat, it's muscles. Yeah. And charisma. Perfect combination, I mean. Muscles and charisma is a really good combination. That's just a fact. Um, Shall we have another question? Roll that dice. I think, Ali, I'm going to need you every time I host one of these just to do the gimmick for me, <laughs> if that's all right. Ah, oh, that's an 18. We've already had an 18. Let's roll it again. That is a 13. It's a more... Um, uh, less concrete question. Ali, what did dice mean to you? <laughs> No, oh, so um, I have a background of applying mathematics. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's just chaos. You know, like, well, you can create uh, statistical dis- uh, distributions of the roles. Mm-hmm. But at the end, it's just chaos. You know, I want to do this. Oh, will you do this? You know, like, I think for a DM, the phrase, you can try. <laughs> It's just absolutely amazing, you know, like, mm-hmm. and it's like in life, right? Like sometimes the chances that you have to do something that you want to do sometimes doesn't really depend on you. So there's many other factors that influence on your daily decision making or the results that you get from your actions. So I think that is, is bringing a little bit of reality into the game, mm-hmm. you know, like, we all want to go and slay the dragon or the sleep with. It's up to you. But then you also want a million dollars uh, in your bank account, right? So just, it may happen, it may not happen. So roll for that. Um, now, fun fact, I don't have a single dice. I reluctantly avoid having dice. Here is the story, if we have time. So, oh, we have time. I need to hear this. <laughs> um, Otherwise, I will just post you dice. Um, we were having, so before lockdown and all this shit, 
we, I was playing with a, in a home game and the DM had some dice and he brought it and said, oh, this is really cool. So we were using his dice and then logged in and everything. And thanks God to um, D&D uh, D &D Beyond that we have the digital roll dicers. And at some point for one version of the celly, I said, the celly deserves its own um, set of dice. Yeah. So I made a, how is it called? Um, a, when you pay for something that is- Oh, made, commission. Yes, for a commission. And it went south, you know, the, there was a small business and they were just like late, they were not responding. And it was like, you know what? I will support more small businesses, but I will never get material dice. And that's it. That's just a very sad story. Is it? I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> will anything change your mind? Because to Sally, he does deserve some beautiful, shiny, click clack chaos dice. Because if I think I will just get into, I will become a dice goblin. If I think that's the term. Oh, right. the yeah, you are speaking to one. Dice are just fun. Thank you, no thank you. I will just... I would like to say it is not my fault that I am a dice goblin. When family and friends found out that I played D&D, they're like, dice, pretty dice, <laughs> right? And for pretty much every birthday and Christmas for the last five years, dice. Which is great. I am not complaining, but I have... No dice that I have bought myself. None. They are all gifts and I love them all so much. More dice, always. It's great. But yeah, can confirm it's very easy to turn into a goblin. <laughs> so yes, I don't I don't want that. Are you sure? Are you sure? I yeah. could just like said you won. <laughs> gently... No. No chat. Don't send me any dice. All right then. <laughs> <laughs> well. So dice, it's me, I mean, going back, it is awesome to get the mathematician's perspective on it. Do you ever have a moment when you're like, that just shouldn't happen? I understand there is a chance of it, but that should not have happened. So I think, so, yes, there is sometimes, I, I believe we have this concept of uh, passive perception and I think passive investigation. Mm -hmm. I believe there should be also passive everything, you know, like if you are bars, you should be a passive performer. So like, yeah. you, you know, you naturally do that. You're trying for that. Or, or if you want to say, maybe implement a house uh, home game rule that is, um, if you have expertise in that, it means that you usually do that. So we will roll with your passive mm -hmm. Uh, performance or passive persuasion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that sometimes you, you, for example, let's say a bard who always is performing. Of course, not all the performances goes well. Even the professional singers might have bad days. Mm -hmm. But there is sometimes that is like this situation is so ridiculous that I'm having a natural one. Mm -hmm. You know, I train for this what's going on that not even the context of the situation justify why you fail in that role yeah, yeah. so i think there is some situations that could be avoided and also save time you know like oh just let's roll with this you know like let's let's tell the story rather than interrupt to make 10 rolls mm -hmm. for the same shit you know so Yes, I definitely have had some situations with that. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good point because obviously that ones are fun and great and sometimes terrible stuff does happen. But, oh, it was Critical Role. I was listening to Campaign 3 of Critical Role with my husband. No spoilers, but there's a bit where there's a uh, trapeze troupe doing some trapeze things and one of them gets in that one and falls and breaks his back very badly. And then, you know, it, they're all NPCs. It's a tiny bit of plot and they move on. But my husband is a trapeze artist in his fair time because you know he's great muscles and charisma can recommend um and he was like that just i mean obviously D, &D mechanics it is what it is but that just wouldn't happen by the time you're professionally performing trapeze you don't roll in that one fall off and break your back right. you might fall off but you'll fall at a 
10 because you know how to fall safely and all that kind of thing, not at a one. And it is just one of the bits where it's really hard to get the mechanics to correlate to all the things your character has been designed to be good at. Yeah. And also, yeah. And also, let's remember that we are in a fantasy world where sometimes we think that or we are bringing our concept of physics into this world. Like, and forget about that. Mm-hmm. This is a fantasy world with fantasy physics rules or fantasy life rules. So. Yes, trigonometry cannot exist. In the <laughs> it just can't. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but maths, yes, dice, chaos, excellent. More questions. <laughs> Roll the dice. We do. 17. Hey, Ali, how do you feel about fudging rolls? Never, ever, 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 ever. I think it's that of a challenge for both sides, but especially for the DM. Mm -hmm. In the sense of sometimes you roll a critical and you kill someone. Then it's a challenge for the DM to man to manage that situation but i believe it is what it is Mm -hmm. sometimes even in life as we were saying things just go south for no reason yeah so i yeah i don't like doing that and i think there is other ways sort of to manage some situations right like the famous uh deuce machina saving the day mm-hmm. or lowering or putting more HP to monster uh, a boss a final boss but then let's the dice be dice it is what it is so yeah, yeah um, of course it, it is more of a challenge to say you know what uh, that didn't hit instead of how oh, I'm going to avoid killing these people or now that is that what do I do? Mm-hmm. Do I bring him back as a return or make a pact and turn him into a um, warlock? Who knows? But yes, uh, no, no fortune rolls, please. Do you DM at all? I DM a lot, mm-hmm. but not uh, normal campaigns, usually like one shots or combat based um, sessions. Mm-hmm. And well, so I usually use um, Roll20 and every time all my, my roles are public and Great. it's fun when they see like my natural ones. Mm-hmm. And it's fun to me when I see my natural 20s because I'm also having fun, right? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm also a player. We have different roles, but I'm also a player. So let me as well have some critical. So let me also have the chance to overcome um, challenges because the player is a challenge. I'm not saying that the DM has to win all the time. Yeah. The DM should be able to win. Sometimes, yeah. That's really interesting because I know other people who DM and play have said on here that they would never fudge as a player but would sometimes fudge as a DM. But for you, nope. And you'll do hit points and move other things around. And then... um, uh, you can just say, you know what? As a D- so the players can pause the game, but DM can also pause the game. You know, just let me have a break. Let's go for a wait, and then let me see how we can handle this situation. Yeah. Come back and like, I have an idea, and that's it. I think actually that happened last week. I was running a um, one shot, and. For some reason, the magician, the, the, the wizard just run through this Hydra and the Hydra basically killed him, right? Like, why did you do that? I mean, why, right? Uh, he had a plan, I hope so. Um, but before that, I uh, I gave them some items and one of them was a, um, a potion of giant strength. I don't remember which giant, but then I was like, so I said, you know, let's have a break so you can meta game, playing your, your, your reaction. And then I came back and I was like, you know what? It was a little bit odd from my side that in a party of caster or mostly casters or deck space characters, I give you a portion of strength. Mm-hmm. No one is going to use ever. 
let's turn that into a Revivify um, spell scroll, which it's like a free pass or like free out of jail card. Mm -hmm. But you still have to get to the wizard and use your action to cast Revivify. So Mm -hmm. I'm giving you sort of a solution, but it's up to you how you use that solution of the best way to get there. Who are you going to send? Another squishy uh, caster, or you're going to send the squishy um, rogue, for Mm -hmm. example. That's really interesting. I love the like sheer panicky metagaming in the pause between something terrible happening and the game resuming whether that's five minutes or whether that's the next game the text threads like just filling up with panic and bad ideas and oh it's great yes. Absolutely. oh it's brilliant okay so no fudging rolls for Ali we do not like it uh, let's have another another question we are tanking through these it is brilliant we still have time left for a few more ooh that is A two. A two is what spell or ability would you have in real life? Oh. You're not allowed wish, it's too obvious. (laughs) Mm. I think I have a top three. I don't know how I'm gonna put them, and all of them are barred. So Jack of all trades, mantle of inspiration, Mm -hmm. or um well that's very specific, but um Bardic inspiration. Yeah. So, you know, um, mantle inspiration is a use of bardic inspiration, but any of those three, I would I would say I would love to. Oh, hang on. Uh, Jack of all trades, bardic inspiration. What was your third one? Uh, ma- mantle of inspiration. Oh, or, you'd separate uh, the two out. Okay. Yes. I mean. Oh, if you had to pick, though, general bardic inspiration <laughs> or mantle, which would you pick? <sighs> bardic inspiration. Why? It's so versatile. Mm-hmm. And I think it just reflects a little bit of personality. Like, is how can I help, basically? You know, I mean, we're in a party, and if you're going to do something, and I'm not just going to stand back and watch, like, you got this girl, and you have another D6, D8, or D whatever. However, I think I actually want to reverse my answer. I want unbreakable majesty very please what does that do i think it's a 14 level of uh, glamour bard amazing so let's so uh basically you can uh, you know um uh no it's a it's a spell from the clerics that they put on you and if somebody wants to hit you they need to do a save okay and, uh, I don't remember the name, but basically it's a similar one. So you become this amazing on earth beauty and people cannot hurt you. If they want to hurt you, they need to roll a charisma save, <laughs> which is one of the least common save in the end. If they pass the charisma save, they can attack you. But next turn, they will have disadvantage on any of your spells. Wow. Or like safe on your spell. So that, oh, you hit me, no consequences. That's incredible. Consequences, we're back again. That's incredible. What happens if they fail? Can they just hit someone else? Or? They can. They can okay. redirect the, the, the spell. So you need to make sure everyone else in your party is stronger than you or you're just being horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yes just- Don't hit me. Hit the small waif child over there. <laughs> uh, I participated in this... Um, PvP tournament and mm-hmm. in a party of three versus three. Ooh. So we had a paladin, a wizard, no, a cleric and myself. So I uh, love myself, a uh, glamour bard because the glamour bard is just the best bard. And on the other party, we had a monk, a rogue, and a wizard. Okay. And I think the wizard, turn one or two, banished my other two. Uh, Companions. I was going to say, I would put my money on that party. Right? Yeah. And of course they won. But I survived like 17 rounds. I was like, oh. Wow. <laughs> so the spell, the, the spell list of the party is just incredible. Mm-hmm. Plus that ability was just amazing. So basically I was like, oh, so you want to hit me? I casted um, Armor of Vagates. Like, yes. they, they didn't see that I... Cast armor like this, and then it comes a monk, 
hits me and it's like, well, now you can take like 80 points of cold damage. Bye. Amazing. And then it's like, <laughs> it's crazy bananas. But the thing that kept me alive was uh, Unbreakable Majesty because they just couldn't hit me. And if they actually hit me, I had like too many hit points. And on the next turn, I could just cast a uh, command or crazy things. So, yes. Oh, just, that sounds a lot fun. What level were you at? Uh, 17, I think. I no. don't ever played that high. That sounds really fun. Yeah, it was crazy, crazy, crazy bananas. Oh, that sounds brilliant. How do these PvP tournaments work? Does it have a DM? Is it text-based? What do you do? So um, you make your teams and then you make like a, this sort of rota or like who is facing who. And then there is always like a, a DM who is like referring. And he puts, uh, well, he established the rules. He established uh, the uh, the map, the battle map. And they usually uh, say like turn one, which is set up. So the first round is not, you cannot have uh, aggressive actions, but you can. Oh, it's stuff like support. Armor of Agathus and just yeah, so like movement or hide or things like that. And then once that is set up, then it's everyone's game. And it's really interesting because sometimes, you, you know, as well, it depends on the initiative track. So if a party, all the three of the members go first, yeah. Right. So some of the encounters is just like, well, you're banished for a minute. Bye. Or uh, this spell that should be banned uh, from all D and D. Um, force cage. Oh, just- it's horrible. Yeah. It's so, just horrible if you're stuck in one. And it's not even concentration. So what? But that's why your bard can take spells from other lists. Uh, um, Feats like Spell Sniper, so you can double your distance. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you could be in a safe distance, but it's still countering every single spell. That sounds awesome. Do you play like a bunch of different matches in one session? Oh. Uh, no, they are usually really long sessions, like okay. two, three hours. So it's like one match per session. Wow. Uh, and is this all online? Like- yeah, online. So uh, I, we usually play that uh, on Roll20 because Okay. Location and distance of the spells are like key. Yeah. Uh, the author of the mind might be a little bit tricky because mm-hmm. the one that telling you where you are is the DM. So as we know, we are always biased. So Yes. Yes, whether you move left or right in your head could depend on whether they hit you or not. And then that would get very angry, yeah. Roll20 seems like a really good place to do that. And public roles. No one can be accused of cheating. Sound brilliant. I mean, I don't want to try it at all. It sounds really (laughs) (laughs) intense. But it does sound like a huge amount of fun. Brilliant. I mean, even if you lose, it's always fun to see the combos that people come with. It's like, I didn't know that was... Can you come as a spectator? Can you just turn up and watch? I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So okay. Roll20 is just like anyone can join. That sounds amazing. That sounds brilliant. Cool. I will come and cheer you on in one of your games. <laughs> Next time. Right. I think we have time for one more question. So Roll that bag. Why, thank you. That is a 14, and it's a very happy question to end on. Ali, what is the funniest moment you have experienced <laughs> in-game? Oh, In another universe, the Sally once jumped out of a cliff. Full Pocahontas moment. And that moment came to define the whole narrative of what the campaign was going to be about. Well, not about, but like. Mm. So we were have, like sort of investigating a cave and one of the characters goes down and got sucked into a, until into the cave. So we just lost track of uh, the character. And in my mind, there was a second rope that was secured. So I took the rope and jumped. The rope was in there. So I managed to survive just like, very, I, I managed to survive the dead saves, or no, I think the cleric cast it as for the die. I don't remember that. I was just lying down in the frozen lake. 
Okay, so it wasn't enough damage to wipe you out completely. Yeah, no, but enough to put me out, and yes. And yeah, that was fun. I mean, it's a little bit stressing. I think this is a public um, apology to my cleric, because I know the cleric lives in stress just because of the selling. But um, it was fun. And then from then on, it was like, hold the selling, hold the selling, don't let the Sally touch that. And I said, are you going to jump again? So, Is this the same party where the wizard has banishment constantly prepped just in case? Yes. Yeah, the cleric, yes. Is everyone in that party as chaotic as Tesselli or is it Tesselli and then everybody else over here somewhere? I don't know. I, that's a good question. I'm going to ask them now. No, <laughs> I, think, I think if we add a little bit more of chaos, I mean, we all sort of make random chaotic uh, choices from time to time but I think we just add a little bit more the balance just would be like born the wall born it all so I think they I'm happy that they let me be that agent of chaos it sounds brilliant did you manage to get your party member back who'd been sucked into a cliff yes 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 yes, yes. I mean <laughs> there is another question what why would you change Oh, go for it. Tell me now. <laughs> Would you make have checked sure the, the rope? rope? Before you jump into a cliff, make sure if the rope is secure. So, yes, we, we managed to, uh, but then it was two threats at the same time, right? Like keeping Tesselia alive and recovering our other members. So, yeah. I just love the image of you grabbing a rope and just yep. flinging yourself off the cliff and then halfway down. Oh, your poor party. <laughs> And it was like session five or six. So it was like a sort of new table. And just this guy is jumping out of clips. I, I wonder what they were thinking out of <laughs> me and the Sally. It was like, sorry. Has the Sally done anything as stupid since? Since? I is would say no. Like <laughs> I would say no, but I think you have to ask my, my party members. <laughs> <you know? laughs> I would say no. I think that's sort of top three. No, I okay. think that's top. That's top. Yes. Is the Tesselli? No, definitely not. Okay. <laughs> there is this vamp- vampiric city, mm-hmm. and Tesselli has a that version of Tesselli has a, a theme with blood. So every time he's just cutting himself uh, for not 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 in a bad way. So. He noticed that we were in a vampire city and it's like, these things might react to blood. There is a building made of crystal and he cuts himself, puts his hand on the wall and the city starts draining the cell's essence of life. I mean, I would argue that that had positive consequences, but my party members, I would say they will strongly disagree with me. Good. <laughs> How much of this chaos do you think you're bringing into the Shadowfell Symphony to Sally? I oh, hope carefully. Bring it all. I hope I will bring it all. Cool. So what you're saying is <laughs> I need to make sure one of us has banishment <laughs> permanently there. Yes. And in this one, I'm more squishy than in the other one. So. Okay. So easier for Harmony to smack you with her shield if you're about to oh. awaken a vampiric city or something. Yes. Yeah. Show me and I will just be like, Go in like a piece of paper. Or just throw you off a cliff. You have form. It sounds great. (laughs) Oh, dear. I think that is all the time we have. (laughs) How come? I know. I'm glad you're having fun. Um, It has been an absolute pleasure, Ali. Um, If you want to see Ali do more brilliant, chaotic, wonderful things, then tune in and watch A Shadowfell Symphony um, on every other Mondays. Um, Ali, do you have anything you want to plug? Mm, I don't think so. I think just give us love every single day. Well, Tuesdays and Mondays and Fridays. Um, Good stuff. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, Ali. And thank you, everyone, for joining us and being part of the show. Um, If you enjoyed this, and even if you didn't, we stream every Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. GMT. And then we stream D&D games on Mondays and Tuesdays. 
So on Monday, this coming Monday, 6 to 9 p.m. GMT, we are streaming the first episode of Into the Sunset. And on Tuesday, it will be the second episode of Ancient Antics. Same time, 6 to 9 p.m. GMT. Uh, all our shows stream at twitch.tv forward slash roll together RPG. Um, and then there's a YouTube link in chat where our VODs go. And don't forget, you can also enjoy as a podcast. Finally, many thanks again to our D20 Club on Patreon, our wonderful dice heads, um, all of our sponsors and supporters, and stay classy at the table.